Yeah. Hi, I'm Sophia Costa, junior, communications major. I'm Ju Yi, uh, and our special guest today is Mr. Ken Best. Thanks for having me, guys. So what are you here presenting for us today, or what are we going to be discussing? Well, after I retired, after 18 years at UConn, I started doing a deep dive into all my music. I've been doing a show on WHUS for a long time. But I have all this stuff at home, in my home office and studio. A lot of books that I've collected, press materials from when I was a music writer and reporter. And so I thought, I have a lot of stuff that I think I would like to share with people. And I think it's important to know the history of music when you're listening to it. And this generation of, of young people likes classic rock, I've found. A lot of people at WHUS play that. and. Even those members of my family that are like that uh, like to listen to it. So I have posters and albums from the 1960s, 1950s, the 70s, all the way through up right now. And I figured I have to think about it and let me see if I can put together an exhibit. I covered art here at UConn in the School of Fine Arts for a long time. I've been to the Benton Museum and all the galleries here. So I said, I think I can put a show together. And so that's what I did. You have studied a lot of uh, Woodstock. Now, Woodstock was obviously a very monumental festival and I was concert-going there. experience. You were there. What would you say uh, was the lasting effect that Woodstock had on the concert-going experience, and how did it change the audience member and how they interacted with music? The big thing was that they had a diverse range of music at Monterey Pop and at Woodstock. It was the thing that set the stage for what is today Glastonbury in England and most other festivals where you have jazz, folk, rock, uh, hip hop, and everything else. It's the spectrum of music that we have today. So that was a big lesson that you can bring different types of music together because the musicians know each other and they respect each other. And that's evident when you hear them talk together in venues that you wouldn't expect. I particularly find it kind of funny how many different uh, members from one band would eventually play in another, another band that was equally as you know, popular. And I want to ask you, what is like a music collaboration or, you know, a member exchange that you, that not a lot of people know about, but that you find particularly interesting? Well, there's a lot of them, but I always go back to Alexis Corner, who was one of the early blues guys in England. Uh, he formed a band called Blues Incorporated. The members of the Rolling Stones passed through that band. John Mayall, through that band. So he's pretty much a core guy in introducing blues to the pop musicians that were listening uh, in England. But when I was talking with Ben Folds uh, a couple of years ago, he was one of the first guys to do a concert at Jorgensen via Zoom when we were coming out of the pandemic. And what he does is he performs with orchestras. And he just makes up something as he goes with the orchestra. Violins play this, piano play that, horns play this. And it's amazing to watch him collaborate like that. And they, they just do what he, he asks. And suddenly you've got a, a piece that sounds like it's been rehearsed and played for many, many years. And when I talk with musicians over the years, what becomes obvious is musicians listen to a lot of different music. They like all different styles, even classical and jazz, because that's where all the Western music roots come from, although jazz was pretty much formed in the United States. But musicians want to discover new sounds, and the way that you do that is by you listen to a lot of stuff that's out there, and then try and reinterpret it to make it sound like it's yours, and you come up with a different style, and that's what they do. And so musicians find collaborators that way. You hear about a guitar player, you'd like to play with them. You hear about a drummer, you hear about uh, a vocalist. That's how you, you meet people. And sometimes the bands work together and sometimes they don't. But eventually it comes together and then you make a record and suddenly you make a lot of money. So I just, I wanted to know how you got involved with Wuss in the first place. Well, I had been doing radio in, at WPK and in Bridgeport for a long time. I started doing basketball games there because when I showed up there, I was in charge of the communications at the university. That's where I did my undergraduate work. So I had to travel with the team and I started doing the games for the radio station because 
for some reason, students weren't, weren't interested back in, the, in those days, and I, I still don't understand why. Anyway, I was doing radio, and for 12 years, I did those games. When I decided it was time to stop doing radio uh, with sports, uh, the program director of the station said, well, you know a lot about music. Why don't you make a tape and demo tape, and we'll put you on the air. So that's what I did, and that's what happened. You have to remember that until radio was invented, the only way you could hear music was in person. Radio is really an intimate kind of situation. You can put your headphones on as you can do now, but in the old days we would have our little ear buds, only one, there were never two, and you could sit in your bed and keep the lights off and pretend you were going to sleep and listening to rock and roll from 500 miles away, which is how people started listening to different sounds in the South and country music and blues and the race music, which was R&B, that you couldn't get unless you were in the, in the room playing it. And so as music exploded, radio stations became more popular and you got national shows like the Casey Kasem Top 40 Countdown. Once MTV became radio that you could watch in 1980, then everything started changing. You had to make videos and things like that in order to promote the music. And now we've sort of come to the other direction where podcasts and streaming is really radio. It's just not over the air radio. It's on the internet. So we're still listening to radio and that's how you hear music and that's how you hear new sounds and why stations like WHUS and WPKN and most college radio stations are very important for new people to hear new music because that's the only place you're going to hear it. Uh, it's on Wednesdays from 3 to 6 at 91.7. WHUS in stores. You can sound alternative streaming online at whus.org. Thank you so much for your time today. Well, thank yes. you for having me. It was, it was fun. I usually don't talk this much. <laughs> I say a few things and I play the, play the music. <laughs>